get my six. The sun is beginning to set over the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch forest. <clears throat> so we're going to take a walk and see what we may or may not see, see what we may or may not hear. I'm, I'm going to try to be somewhat quiet because it's like eerily still out here. I only hear a couple of crickets. It's been very cold the last few days. It's gotten cold for the first time this year. We're into mid-November now. And we're going to start down here below the log yard taking a look <clears throat> once again at these beautiful, beautiful 10 to 12 feet tall Leland cypresses that uh, folks from Ivy Corner garden center came and installed this weekend it's amazing five of them they cut us a deal because we kind of bought them out of season and uh, we bought five you know and uh, <clears throat> they were in and out of here in an hour it was amazing all three of those guys I, I said it in the video where we showed this going on they were all in their 60s and it's funny i told them they could outwork six 20 year olds and they laughed at that and said of course they could because 20 year olds don't work but now that's not entirely true that's kind of a stereotype. But I want to point something out about the guy that owns the company. He was actually one of the guys here doing the work. So he owns the company, goes to work every day, and doesn't just do the paperwork and the bookkeeping. Uh, his name's William, great guy, but he actually comes out and does the labor. You know, I, I, I know of people who feel that they are too good to, to work, especially manual labor, <clears throat> like they're above that, like it's beneath them. Here's a man, and I got to know him a little bit, enough to know that if he didn't want to work, he wouldn't have to. His situation, he wouldn't have had to for a long time, but he chooses to because he loves it. He's good at it, he's passionate about it, and as you can see, he did a good job. Did an excellent job. And that's the kind of guy, the kind of person I love interacting with. Someone who works, especially when they don't have to. And uh, I mean, I just kinda, there's like, I kind of give bonus points to people who kind of aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. Maybe that's because I come from a background of getting my hands dirty and, you know, a long succession of ancestors who got their hands dirty and who uh, <clears throat> never felt as if any job was beneath us, especially in regard to when those jobs were necessary to take care of those we love. So, <clears throat> with that said, that's like, really has nothing to do with I was going to talk about today. Um, you know, the title of the video, I, I had to leave. I had to leave them. Um, I've been running around like a rabbit chasing its tiny little cottontail. It's just been super, super busy. Now I'm starting to slow down here so you guys can get my six. This twilight is a very mystical time of day. We're up here where forest meets field twilight mountaintop so many reasons why the veil is thinner here than in most places if you remember that from our readings from october nights but again i thought i was busy in october because i was reading october nights doing two videos a day most days still got bigfoot sasquatch files volume five out but now here midway through november i find that i'm even busier Guys, I'm telling you, and I'm kind of saving this up for the day that it happens, but I am going to win the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympic 1500 meter finals this fall. I know you're like crazy lake. You're running out of time. Falls on the way out. I just heard a very loud tree knock. Maybe a distant howl. Hey, falls, falls still here. And I'm putting it off a little bit longer because I'm up in the ante and I'm going to make this an even more amazing feat because of when I'm doing it. <clears throat> and it'll all make sense when I do it. So I'd forgotten about this and I actually just ran. I went out and did an easy four miles. Another tree knock. And this is after a day that started around 6 a.m. A day that saw 3,000 words in... Bigfoot Sasquatch Files, Volume 6, written before I ate breakfast. We got movement back here. 
Watch. I saw a large dark object duck down in the grass. <clears throat> Keep watching. Now you know my strategy, you know my research methods. I can't face them directly. I have to go this way. You've got to get my six, which means directly behind me. It's military jargon for those who, who are new to the channel. They, they always seem to ask that. We're getting a lot of heavy tree knocking over this way, and I'm seeing movement up this way. What is that? Okay. <laughs> came in here running my mouth and I think they flanked me. We got movement up here. Tree knocks over here that stopped with the movement. It might be a good time to take a seat and wait. So I'm gonna go into the edge of the tree line. <clears throat> okay. Good spot, good choice. Oh, did you see that? Watch the ridge behind me. I just saw a dark object. I don't know if the title of the video is going to be I had to leave them so much anymore because we've got some action out here. I'm looking behind me because I'm hearing footsteps. <clears throat> Okay, so I can't, you know how the, how the method works. I cannot focus on them or they're not gonna do anything. They're just gonna stay hidden. So I've gotta do slow pans and talk and I can't watch. You guys gotta be my, my eyes and my ears back there. But I might have to sneeze. Or not. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> after breakfast, I, I missed my morning workout. I actually have been doing two-a-days, getting ready to win this 1,500-meter Olympic 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympic final this fall here in my yard in Virginia. Um, but I've been inundated with just being busy, made myself super, super busy. First of all, I had to leave. I was gone for an hour. I had the entire cab of the truck was full of packages to ship out. So if you're one of the hordes of people who in the last 24 hours but autographed copies <coughs> of off switch full-length novel uh this is the one you'll remember in october nights if you were here for those stories there was a story called the writer's wife i talked about a a, a novel that actually was not supposed to be a, a novel it was supposed to be a note and i started writing that note and that note became this novel written in a notebook with pens in the philippines when we didn't have electricity or water or money and then over a period of months i would rent internet cafe time and type it into a word doc on a, putting up with the harassment i put up with in that place until it was done the story behind this story is better well i don't want to say it's better than the story because this story is based on my time in iraq and in my experiences once i got home written in fictional form so i could get through it Let's just say names and places and stuff have been changed and that's about it. But anyway, so I had boxes, big boxes packed with these to mail out. Thank you, each and every one of you got that. If you want a copy, you know, you go to the Amazon link in the description box and uh, you, know, you just go look for it in my, my collection there. <clears throat> okay. And then also I had several packages, many of the uh, 8x10 It's gotten kind of silent. I'm going to go on the move again. The 8x10 with me and potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch in the background about 40 yards over the hill from last year. From that amazing video footage we captured. But now, on top of all that, I can't keep a secret. It's terrible. I was going to wait and make this a big surprise. But, you know, years ago, I used to kind of piddle around with woodwork woodworking projects mostly i made um the raw materials i would cut the raw materials that wood turners that use lathes and, and stuff use and other various saws to make wood projects i would i would kind of like i have access like pretty much you've seen my log yard down there that's like but if i want it 
I can get black cherry, walnut, maple, anything because of where I am. And the folks in the cities, they just don't have that stuff. So I've been making some of that stuff, turning blanks, putting it in the Etsy store, huge slab of that sold, had to ship that out. And uh, I mean, that was like a huge, but anyway, I've gotten back into some, some uh, projects and I'm really excited about it because I forgot how much I, well, I forgot to watch for movement. And I think we just had a bunch right up there above the tent. I forgot how much I actually enjoy working with wood, aside from just bashing it up with my 10 pound sledgehammer and my diamond mauls, you know, to burn it, to heat my house. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful substance. There's so many things you can do with it. There's unlimited, you know, if you're a creative guy like me, there's like unlimited projects you can do with it. And so the last few days since I got my new bandsaw, I've actually, been working on some i'm not going to show you a final a final product because i haven't gotten that far yet but let's just say i've been putting many many hours into this and uh, i think maybe within the week i'm going to have some final products to show but look at this i know you're probably laughing right now you're saying wow you got a little piece of wood with a string tied around it this little piece of wood started with a huge piece of wood. I've got these somewhat lengthy slabs of beautiful Eastern red cedar. It's a beautiful wood. It smells great. I've had to cut these down with my bandsaw. <clears throat> I've had to drill a hole through there with a drill. See, I can use man tools. I can use man tools too, other than just sledgehammers and diamond mauls, you know? And then <clears throat> what's really neat <clears throat> Is my beautiful bride dearly, aka Giggly Girl. She gets excited about my ideas. She thinks they're crazy, but she likes to help. And so she's helping me with the strings, putting the strings through there and tying them. And this is just one of several things I'm working on. So I've got that going on. On top of hoping to have Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 6 finished in order by in time for Thanksgiving. Make sure I'm fit enough and in shape enough to win the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympic 1500 meter finals uh, shortly after Thanksgiving. Okay, that's your hint. That's all I'm going to say as far as when. I know a lot of folks have asked if they could come out and watch the race. But unfortunately, <laughs> due to COVID-19, due to social distancing, I have to say no. Um, yeah, even people that know me personally, personal friends that I have out regularly, they want to come out and cheer me on as as I make all efforts to decimate the field in the in the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympic 1500 meter finals, which will be held out here this fall in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia in my backyard. And I've had to tell them guys no, because that would put us over the limits here. You know, the recommended you know, maximum number of people congregating. And, I, you know, it's great. I wish you could be there to witness history, to see a, a very old person who, who, whose prime, whose peak in the 1500 meters was like 30 years ago almost. Yeah, it was. It was 30 years ago. It was 30 years ago. I know that you guys would like to see an individual like that, you know, being me, of course do something colossal but i just can't we can't do it because we got to worry we, we've got to be safe we've got to be responsible so i got all these things going on <clears throat> and uh so anyway plus you know my son's doing the virtual learning the virtual schooling from home because of covid so i was in there doing all this stuff today trying to get all this stuff done and uh kept helping him with his work there was so much going on i almost i didn't like i wasn't getting like angry i don't really get angry um it's a wasted emotion i mean i am a human but when i see it coming I, i've learned to step back you know i've learned to step back and uh because it's not it's not worth it i'd rather spend my time and my emotional energy wow look at that watch it see if it moves I'd rather focus on positive things. So, but I was becoming frustrated. And I guess here's the point of the talk. It's not about, look at me, look at how busy I am. This is not one big, long, humble brag. It's about noticing when you do start to become overwhelmed, it's time to just walk away. 
And so I found myself becoming overwhelmed and I, I'm hearing footsteps and what sounds like voices. So my point is, and it occurred to me, I hadn't trained yet today. I decided to just take some me time, even though I had, you know, about a dozen more books to autograph and pack up for tomorrow's mailing. More of these to work on. I was like, nope, I need some me time because I'm about ready to just, I, I'm, I just feel like I'm frustrated. So I came outside, did my run. And now that I'm done with that, you know, I always walk around and do a cool down. I did that and I was about ready to go back to work. And then I said, nah, let's just take some more me time. So I grabbed the phone and figured I'd make a video while I'm taking some more me time. I mean, I'm not sweaty or breathing hard because I've already done my cool down. Plus, this is a pretty good time of day to potentially see something. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend a few minutes. I'm going to walk into the woods and I'm going to flip the phone so we can scan. Because I have heard footsteps over there. I believe that whatever was doing the tree knocks out there may or may not have slipped up on us. So let's see if we can use Zoom to slip up on them. Okay, you can hear the crows. They may be watchers because here there's a dip in this ravine straight down there and it comes back up the other side. And I hear something over there. I'm gonna stand up for a better view. A hawk has joined the crow. We got... I don't want to walk too much because these leaves are very dry and whatever's out here will hear me. It's kind of thick down there. Maybe in the camera, directly at where I'm hearing footsteps and why am I not seeing anything? Are they cloaking? You hear how close that is? potentially of a Bigfoot Sasquatch that is cloaking right now. <clears throat>
perhaps the one we clearly hear in this area is what we saw moving in the field and the steps, footsteps we heard from here was the one doing the knocking. Now I hear something up here. Okay, so I'm back out of the forest. They're following me, you hear that? Listen, we will never see them if I'm looking directly at them and aiming the camera directly at them. That's just how it goes. <clears throat> I mean, just some Q&A stuff. People are like, why don't you just walk right up to it and punch it in the face? Somebody said that recently. Hey, why don't you just walk up to a Bigfoot Sasquatch and punch it in the face? I'm not going to do that. Number two. Watch for it. They know when these cameras are here. There's a, there's a pretty solid theory out there that him, her, it, or they can cloak. Wow, did you see that one? We just witnessed that, potentially. Potentially, there was something out here that can't be explained, cloaking. It was walking right there. It was with us, but we saw nothing. So now let's see if it follows me home. So I'm gonna walk back down here and shower. And now that my Olympic Training is complete. So anyway, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, I know a lot of you folks that watch are pretty busy people too. Catch yourself doing a little bit too much. Just step back, walk away from it, and give yourself a break. saw something let me flip the phone what a beautiful view from up here now i'm acting like i'm not trying to point the camera at whatever i just saw so that i don't scare it well that's just a deer see it hi deer Well, at least the deer are curious as to what Crazy Lake's out here doing today. See you next time. <laughs>